Today I'm reviewing the Alband Inmersat bundle from Nualak. This kit is available through the various Amazon stores for around 80 US dollars or about 73 UK pounds and actually includes a few more items than are displayed on the screen here. Throughout today's tests, I used my Nualak Smarty dongle, a $34 or £31 software defined radio. This SDR has a permanently enabled BIAS T output capable of powering the included Sawbird Inmersat LNA and filter. So let's have a look at exactly what comes with the kit. The first part, of course, is the actual patch antenna. This is a small, very lightweight PCB with an SMA antenna connector attached directly to the board. Next is the Sawbird I.O., a low noise amp with built-in filter tuned for the Inmersat frequency range. This package contains a male-to-male -male SMA pigtail which is used for linking the Sawbird to the antenna and a USB power cable in case you're using an SDR without a bias T. There are also several SMA adapters included in the kit, including a DC block which can be used when appropriate. Lastly, we have a DC barrel to micro USB cable in this comprehensive bundle from Nualek. I went outside to the yard with the Alban patch antenna, which I placed in a small tripod designed for cellular phones. The SMA pigtail cable was used to connect the antenna to the Sawbird LNA and filter, which in turn was connected to 2 meters of RG174 to the Smarty dongle plugged into the USB port of my old laptop. Without obstructions, the antenna had a good view of the southern sky. I loaded Jero and tuned SDR Sharp to the 1.54 GHz band and was pleased to see a good selection of the Inmersat Aero transponders. I zoomed in to see if I could decode the weakest of the four 10,500 BPS transponders and as I did I noticed an audio transponder fire up. I quickly retuned and reset Jero to see how well the patch would receive the 8400 BPS audio channel. As you can hear, Jero was able to resolve the audio just fine using this antenna bundle. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I've been keeping an eye on that and looking at the uh Looking at the one there in Central America, Fiego, or whatever it's called, the ash is actually going the opposite direction. Tuning to the start of the aeroband, I was interested to see the 600 BPS PSMC channels from both 98 degrees west and 54 degrees west were coming in with a signal to noise ratio of around 16 decibels or so. The constellation was nice and tight, indicating that Jero was getting strong reception from these transponders. I was able to get a good lock on all the 600 BPS channels from both the satellites in my view without needing to rotate the patch at all. This will be pleasing to military aviation enthusiasts who enjoy logging the United States Air Force transport planes that tend to use these lower speed transponders. The 1200 BPS channels also came in well as you can see on the FFT and Gero Constellation displays. Next I focused on the higher speed 10,500 BPS transponders. These are typically the busiest frequencies where you will log the greatest number of aircraft at any time on any given day. When I tuned to the first high speed transponder, I adjusted the antenna position slightly in order to find the highest signal to noise ratio of around 14 decibels. Before long, the ATC and operations messages were being received and decoded on the Jero display. The second 10,500 BPS transponder was also reasonably active and provided strong decodes as well. To the right, I could see five other high-speed transponders, two of these being the weaker ones at 98 degrees west, plus the three from 54 degrees west. Before trying to decode these, I observed that the plane log had over 60 entries from just those first two high-speed transponders. Rotating the L-band patch antenna a little to the left allowed me to clearly see all three of the high-speed transponders at 54 West. I had not anticipated being able to receive these, so was keen to see if Jero would acquire a good signal and data lock. With a signal to noise ratio having around 10 dB, I was hopeful, and sure enough, messages soon started appearing on these transponders. 
I was intrigued to discover that there was much less activity from aircraft on the 54 degrees west satellite compared to the 98 degree west satellite. I reckon this was partly down to the time of day and also the reduced amount of air traffic on account of the current pandemic restrictions on international travel. Next I relocated to another area of the property where the patch would only be able to see the 98 degree west satellite. I also brought out my RTL SDR L-band antenna so I could pair reception between both units. If you haven't seen my review of the new RTL SDR blog L-band antenna you may want to click the link above. Pleasingly I was able to see all four high speed transponders from this position. As soon as I tuned to the correct frequency data started streaming in. After a short while I cleared the Gerald plane log and ACARS windows to see if there was much activity on the second higher speed transponder. Within about a minute or so over 20 aircraft had been seen. Unfortunately although the two weaker 10,500 BPS channels were showing on the SDR sharp display with a signal to noise ratio of around 7 dB Gero was just unable to decode them. Following these experiments I disconnected the Nualec system and hooked the cable up to my RTL SDR L-band patch antenna to see how it would compare. The 98 degree PSMC channel was received with a signal to noise ratio that averaged around 13 dB and peaked at 14.8 dB with the Nualec bundle. The RTL SDR antenna picked the signal up much better averaging over 19 dB and peaking at 20. I performed the experiment again on one of the 1200 BPS channels. The Nualec Inmerset bundle was receiving this transponder very well displaying a signal to noise ratio of over 19 dB with Gero displaying a nice constellation. Switching antennas revealed a similar outcome though. The RTL SDR blog patch antenna added over 5 dB to the signal strength and displayed a beautifully tight constellation on the Gero display. Lastly I wanted to try the weakest signals on the 98 degree west satellite. As I had observed several times the new ELEC bundle was unable to provide a strong enough signal to Gero to decode these two weaker transponders. Would the RTL SDR patch antenna have enough gain to do so or would it be un unable to decode them as well? The switch was made once again and although the signal was marginal for the RTL SDR L-band patch antenna with a signal to noise ratio of just between 7 and 8 dB Gero was able to acquire a data lock and begin decoding. The same was true of the second weak transponder that the Nualec in Merset bundle had been unable to receive well. A data lock was acquired and messages were received. The Nualec in Merset patch antenna kit is interesting to experiment with and it will certainly get you decoding very quickly. I will be using mine alongside other L-band equipment to decode multiple transponders from multiple satellites simultaneously. I was able to use it to monitor the voice channels in addition to all but two of the data channels on the closest satellite and I was very pleased to discover it would pull in the high speed transponders from the 54 degree west satellite of which I am at the edge of coverage. I, uh, when you, when you land, man, don't worry about that anticollision line. Just go ahead and put it, put it to bed and y'all go on home. We, we, it's been a bad day at work so we'll, we'll work it out Tuesday morning. All right brother man I appreciate it. Hey thanks for everything Kyle. A major benefit of the new ELEC bundle is that it is available with fast shipping throughout the world via Amazon and Amazon Prime. I've placed some product links in the description below. If you've enjoyed this review I invite you to like, share it with friends who would be interested, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications. That way you'll not miss any of the exciting content that is coming in the future. For now though all that remains is for me to wish you well and encourage you to stay safe. Until next time, this is Frugal Radio, out.